Hey everybody, this is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. On today's show, we're going to answer and discuss the following question. One day I'm focused and the next I see a great course or something and get totally sidetracked. How do you keep focus when you want everything to happen now? As a student of psychology, I really just want to rip into this question. But let's look at the second part first. When you want everything to happen now. Pamela, what's your reaction to that? Uh, How does that comment make you feel? How are you going to respond to it? Well, even just looking at our show notes and reading that sentence and then hearing you say it, my initial reaction is feeling overwhelmed. Like, I relate to this statement so much that it hurts. (laughs) I want everything to happen now. I have all these ideas that I want to see succeed in the world, come into the world. There's like this mixture for me of overwhelm, even though I'm not working on anything right now. I'm not actually doing my work. I mean, this is my work. Uh, Part of my work is to record with you, obviously. But I'm not working on my website. I'm not creating a video. So I'm not doing that other work. But even thinking about it makes me feel overwhelmed and a little bit like, where do I begin? But there's also some hope mixed in there where I I just see the world of possibilities. I see everything that is possible. So there's still hope in there. It's just that my visceral reaction is, help me. (laughs) (laughs) That's a mindset problem. There's no question about it. When you want everything to happen now, it's a mindset problem. And what I have to say to that is, anything worth doing takes time. You're not going to become a concert violinist in a month, not even in a year. Take any great profession such as artist, writer, teacher, doctor, and entrepreneur. It all takes time to learn and to master. So quit rushing. Just calm down and understand that if you're going to be a great business person, you're going to spend your entire life learning something new every day. The masters learn every day. This is not some race to a finish line. It's a process. It's a lifestyle. And it's a commitment. So my question is, are you committed to being a great business person? Are you still stuck in that employee mentality of getting the job done? Did Hmm. you catch that? See, getting something done is completing a task. Being an entrepreneur is a process. You're never going to get it all done, and you're never going to get everything to happen right now. And think about it. If you did, then it's over. There's Mm -hmm. no tomorrow. That's true. So just calm down and embrace the process. But let's discuss this part where we talk about how to keep focus. I know why I have trouble keeping focus. I, like I said earlier, I have all of these ideas that, and I want them all to happen (laughs) and all to succeed. And I think for some people, there's also possibly a time limit because their finances may be running out. If they are not working a regular job right now, but they're working on building a business, then they don't have the income that they had or would have had if they had stayed in a job. So there's that. Mm -hmm. So there's all this pressure of get it done now because I don't have very long before my savings runs out. And that's just one possible reason. But why do you think people have so much trouble focusing? What else is there? Well, you know, what you're discussing there is what I call the startup problem. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it is a problem. At some point, you know, you can only go so long without revenue. And as I always say, It's not a business unless it's a revenue. Otherwise, it's pre-business, you know. So, but I think the biggest reason most people have difficulty focusing is because they don't have a really great vision and they don't have a plan to achieve it. Mm -hmm. It becomes a lot easier to ignore all that noise those shiny objects, the courses, the offerings, and the other things that people say you should be doing, 
if you have an ironclad plan to accomplish your goals. I'm not saying you don't need to accomplish those things. You very well might need to accomplish those things. But everything has a time and it has a place. So you see what looks like a great course on, say, LinkedIn, using LinkedIn effectively. And you know this is something that you're going to be using in the future. It's part of the plan, but it's not the part of the plan that you're working on right now. What do you do? You could stop what you're doing and take that course because you're going to need it. Or you could bookmark that information and keep on with the plan. Yeah, and we were talking about this earlier. I even suggested that if it's a course that is available at a discounted price and you really want to take advantage of that discounted price, I would almost buy the course now and then plan to take it later. Put it in your calendar for a month from now or whenever is appropriate for you. That takes extra discipline though. If you don't feel like you're going to have the discipline to do that and it's only going to distract you knowing that it's available, then don't go that route. But if you do have the discipline to take advantage of the economic savings and you can buy it now, then go ahead and do that and then actually do the course material later. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same as bookmarking it. You just spent some money doing so. But I'm mm. going to tell you as someone who's been in the business a long time and that knows a lot of these course creators, I'm going to tell you there's no such thing as a limited release. There's mm. no such thing as a, this price is only available for the next 72 hours. Yeah. Because <laughs> if that course is good, it's going to make money, and it's going to get reviews, and that course owner is going to go through a new launch. Mm-hmm. And they're going to true. do this at at least once a year, sometimes a couple of times a year, and they're going to do it again and again and again. Possibly for years with updates. I mean, they're definitely going to do it for as long as it makes money. So don't be fooled by that whole scarcity thing. It's how they get all the newbies stuck. If you're in this business long enough, you're going to realize, yeah, they did that one last year. And Mm -hmm. I think they did it for that same discounted price. Yeah. So... Stick with your plan. You know, and another thing, if you do, don't ever see that course again, (laughs) you just saved yourself a lot of time and money on a really bad course. Right. If it doesn't have the social proof that it is a good course, people are getting value from it, and therefore it will be offered again, then it will just fall off the map and you won't be able to access it because it's really not providing enough value anyway. That's right. Yeah, that's a good point. There's a time and a place for everything. Have a plan and follow it. Think of it like a map or a guidebook or even an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. So let's take something really simple. Like, Pamela, let's say you had to get from Atlanta to L.A. to attend Mm -hmm. a conference on a certain date. Now, you got two choices. You're going to buy a plane ticket that's going to require you to be at the airport at a certain time on a certain day in order to make it to L.A. on the right time. So you wouldn't just be on your drive to the airport and see an ad for a event that's happening in Atlanta and you stop and go to that event. You have a plan. It's to be at the airport, to get on a plane, to be in L.A. at a specific time. You're not going to alter from that plan. Well, I usually wouldn't. However, if Edward Norton were appearing in Atlanta, I would drop everything and go see him. (laughs) So... There are exceptions to this rule for me. (laughs) If Edward Norton is anywhere in the vicinity, then all of my other plans will go out the window. (laughs) So yes, for Edward Norton, I would stop. (laughs) That's different than shiny object syndrome for a course or a how-to. Yes. That's that's, that's a little different. (laughs) You know, your other choice is that you're going to map out your directions. You're going on how to drive there. So you're going to know which roads to take. You're going to know the amount of time you need to drive each day. You're going to know how far you need to go each day to be in L.A. by the appropriate date. You're not going to let a billboard on the side of the road advertising the Grand Canyon cause you to detour and go to the Grand Canyon for three days because you have a plan to be in L.A. on a certain day. Yeah. Building a business... Accomplishing your goals is no different than mapping out your directions to drive from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Some people just haven't gone to the trouble to do that. I got it in my head. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you what, when you've got it in your head, it's a dream. Well, let me just actually insert something here because I am weaker in this area. As you know, I do tend to keep things in my head and not write them down. But what I've been doing lately, I went to Office Depot. I bought a 99 cent notebook. <laughs> so if I ever lose it, I'm not going to freak out. Um, and what I've been doing is I, I try and keep this notebook with me at all times, or at least most of the time when I can think about it. Obviously, I will use it the way most people do, write down things that come to mind about how I want to accomplish things. So it's very useful that way. But also what I've been doing is if I am somewhere without my notebook and I think of something, I'll write it on a scrap piece of paper, somebody's business card, something like that. And I just paste that right into my notebook. I don't even transcribe it into the pages. I just tape it right to a page in the notebook. So I've got my original note there and there's no loss in translation when I go look at it later. And I found that that's really helpful and it almost has a, like an artsy craftsy feel to it. So that makes me happy on a creative level, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, but I've also found it very useful. So that does help keep me focused. It definitely helps me stay consistent about writing my thoughts down and having a written plan. Yes, but is that notebook really a written plan? Is it a roadmap to get from where you are today to your vision in five years? There's different things in there. There is some planning in there, definitely, yes. There's also just miscellaneous ideas that come to my head that I don't want to forget, um, concepts that you and I talk about that I don't want to forget that I want to review later. So it's not a... it's. The notebook is not dedicated to just housing my plan, but it does have my planning thoughts in there. So you have kind of morphed together your planning notebook with your idea notebook Mm -hmm. and other, other things, even your task notebook, rather than keeping these as three separate things. True. I'm not saying that you should keep them as three separate things, but let me ask you. If you were a general and you were planning the invasion of your enemy (laughs) and you intend to succeed with as few casualties as possible, Mm -hmm. are you going to have a plan that you execute or are you going to have a plan with a lot of other notes all around it about other things? Well, hmm, that's a good question. How important is your business? Is your business as important to you as a general's invasion plan is to him. Well, when you put it like that, I guess it has not had that weight in my life. But maybe that's something I should change. That's what I need to look at. All I can say is a plan will keep you focused and a vision and the goals within that vision is what is going to help you create that plan. Yeah, I have heard you say many times that when you are considering actions, and this is in some of our previous episodes as well, when you're considering taking an action, consider how the action serves your long-term vision. I do ask you that question a lot, don't I? Yes, you do, but it's been very helpful. (laughs) You know, I do, with your prompting and just through reading books and other articles, I am definitely more disciplined about evaluating what actions I spend my time on. Now, I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm certainly better than I used to be when we first met, what, a year or two ago now. Um, I can see the evolution, the change in me, not only in my business practices, but also it's spilled over into my relationships, who I choose to spend my time around, how much time I choose to spend with them and why based upon whatever goals I may have for that relationship or for my life, you know. Sometimes people's lives just evolve and change and they, friendships kind of fade away or friendships start up based upon where you're at in your life. So I found that this, you know, evaluating my actions based on where I want to be is affecting all areas of my life and not just business, but in a positive way. I think it's been a very positive shift in mindset for me. That's good. Yeah. 
So we've created a worksheet for you on how to create your vision, and that was part of our productivity and goal setting workbook, which we will link to in the show notes. But Tracy, go over it again for us. Okay. Anytime you're starting out on a great adventure, you've got to have a vision for it. And I always say when you're going to be an entrepreneur, there's not a big distinction between your life, your lifestyle, and your business. It's different when you have a corporate job, it's nine to five, you come home, you you just don't have to think about it that much more. If you don't want to, you're not going to bring work home. I know some of you do, but there's a big difference when you have full control over the life you have because of your ability to control your business and mold it and design it to support your lifestyle. So I always start people out with, where are you going to be in five years? What is your life going to be like? What's your lifestyle going to be like? How does your personal relationships and your business support that? And you create a vision and you compare that vision five years from now to what your life's like today. And from that comparison, you're able to say, these are the goals I have to accomplish over the next five years to get that life that I envision. Now, how I work through this process, and you're going to think I'm crazy, but yes, I do have my life planned out for the next five years. Does that mean I lose spontaneity? I don't take up opportunities that serve my purpose? No, it doesn't mean any that. It means I know exactly how I'm going to be living my life in five years. I know the person I'm going to evolve into. I've planned it. And I have determined what goals I have to accomplish between now and then. And then I break them down. What, what, what do I have to accomplish this year? What can wait till next year? What's got to happen in year three? And what's got to happen in year four? And then I actually plan this out. It's almost like, you know, do you know what a mind map is? Mm-hmm. Um, so I basically, I take it and it starts out kind of as an outline and how things connect. And I create this mind map and I put it up on my vision board. You have a vision board? I do, actually. I do. I love it. Some people call them dream boards, but basically I put that up on my vision board. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I actually look at is this year. And then I look at the goals I have to accomplish this year, and I divide the year into three-month segments, so basically quarters. And I keep all of that close by, but I only really strategically plan out three months at a time. Mm. Now, I keep it all close by so that I can, when a resource arrives, something crosses my plane of vision that I don't need to focus on right now, but I know I'm going to need it this year, I can kind of add that. I can bookmark it to that and keep going with Mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to be dealing with right now. But I take the three months, what goals are going to be accomplished in three months or what steps toward a goal are going to be accomplished in the next three months. And I break this thing down in detail. I get down to the nitty gritty task. And here's the thing. Building a website is not a task. It's a goal. Hmm. The task is wireframing the homepage, wireframing yeah. the about page, writing the content for the homepage, writing the content for the about page. Individual task. Mm-hmm. Sort of like the um, the getting things done process. Is that what you model yours on? To a degree, but, you know, of course, I've studied all of these for years and I've taken the best from everyone and created my own version that works for me. Yeah. And everybody will do that over time. Yeah. But start with somebody else's plan and, and try to work it so that you at least are getting started. Now, I then have a schedule. Now, I have a certain amount of time each day that has to be spent with clients. I have a certain amount of time for personal things. But there's all the other times in there. And I actually schedule all these tasks into my week. I have this list of tasks that have to be accomplished over the next three months to accomplish the goals I want to accomplish in these three months. And they get scheduled. Now, do I schedule out all three months? No, because things are always going to happen. But I usually schedule out where I'm looking a week or two in advance to detail tasks. Most people keep a calendar that's got their appointments on it or a day something has to be completed. No, 
Mm-hmm. Mine literally, I mean, today's task looks like record this episode. Mm-hmm. Write the introduction for the webpage for this episode. Mm-hmm. Write the podcast description for this episode. Set up the transcript for this episode. Create the links for the website for this episode. Set up the download sign-up page for this episode. This is all scheduled right here in this book I'm looking at right now. Everything in detail. I have a plan. I don't think about, I don't have to even think. I don't have to think, what do I need to do next? Right, right. It's all there. You just look at it and do the next thing. I look at it and do it. Yeah. And if I think of something, oh crap, I need to do that too. Mm -hmm. I flip the page on my calendar and I write it right in. Mm -hmm. It's scheduled for a day in the next coming day, a few days. I don't have to like stop and accomplish it because I thought of it right now. Yeah. I think, uh, let me just make an observation here because I Mm -hmm. struggle with this. And on the one hand, I really envy your organization and your process. And on the Mm -hmm. other hand, I hear you describe it. And I can't be the only one that has this reaction. (laughs) I think this is a reaction of creative people in general. I hear you describe it. And I just start shuddering because it feels so restrictive to me. And I know that it's not. I know that it enables you to get things done. So I, I get that the reaction that I have is sort of counterintuitive because actually following a process like this will enable you to get so much more done and be so much more creative. And you're not spinning your wheels. You're not wasting your time. But I think a lot of people have the initial reaction that I have. And that is like, oh, my God, it feels so boxed in. And they don't get past that. Yeah, so. but you know what? I know what I'm capable of accomplishing in a day. And it's mm-hmm. not like that I give these times. Right. I mean, I do us shooting this episode. It's got a time marker next to it. But if you actually looked at my calendar, I completely ignore the time thing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you buy one of those pre-printed scheduling calendars, I don't look at the time. I don't even yeah. write anything down next time. Yeah. This is... I use the column for this day to write down all the tasks I'm going to accomplish today. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I do them in a specific order? Does it mean they happen at a specific time? No, not unless they're an appointment. Yeah. But I scheduled it in and I can easily just glance at this and go, all right, for Friday, I have so much scheduled that I can't accomplish anything else. So let's flip to Monday and write this in on Monday. Right, right. I never forget to do anything. Mm Mm-hmm. You know I accomplish more than most people accomplish. I do, I do. And that's why I'm saying I see the value. I'm I'm absolutely not trying to take anything away from the value. I I want people out there listening to us who have my reaction to go ahead and try this anyway because it works. You know, it, you don't have to use exactly the process Tracy uses, but even for me, even in my kind of mental haze sometimes where I'm trying to get everything done and I don't have a good future plan, I actually have gotten to the point where I at least plan out the next day's activities. I know Mm -hmm. and I write down what I'm going to do the next day. Do I plan out a week ahead of time or two weeks ahead of time? No, I'm not at that point. I'm okay with that right now. At some point, it'll probably have to change for me, but I at least know what I have to accomplish in a day. And that is more than I used to do. <laughs> so, And it is very helpful. So I just want people who identify with what I'm saying to try this anyway. And maybe your start is just to plan a day ahead of time. Don't worry about planning a week yet. Just plan that day. And then you'll get into that rhythm and you'll be able to plan more days ahead. I think that's a good way to overcome the resistance to this. Mm-hmm. Well, if you think about it, it sounds like I spend a lot of time planning. Mm-hmm, it does. But I don't because I already know what my goals are. I've already mapped my... I understand and I know myself so well that I know exactly where I want to be in five years. And I know what goals have to happen. And all I have to do is each month, each three-month period, I do spend an entire day planning. Yeah. It helps keep me focused. It's meditative. Mm-hmm. I know where I'm heading. I, I know I accomplish those goals, reward myself. I know where I'm going for the next three months. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to this day-to-day stuff, there's actually very little time spent doing it because as things come up, I propagate the calendar. I take that 10 seconds to propagate the calendar. Right. And then on Sundays, 
I sit down for like 15 or 20 minutes, review the upcoming week, make sure that all the tasks I need to take care of toward my goals for the coming week are penciled in and that I haven't put any, I haven't put too much on any one day to where I wouldn't be able to accomplish everything on that day. So I might rearrange a little bit. I add to a little bit, but that's really it. There's just not much to the way I plan except for every three months. So today we want to ask you a question. Do you understand that entrepreneurism is a mindset? It's not a task to be completed. You're never going to reach the end. It's your lifestyle. And do you have a plan? Is it in writing? Do you know the task you need to complete today in order to achieve your goals for tomorrow? Head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and you can answer those questions in the comments to this episode. Or if you'd like to keep it personal and ask us in private, just click on the contact page and answer the questions there. Then only Pam and I will see it. And if you would like to get your question answered by Pam and I, just go to the contact page and ask your question and we will answer it on one of the upcoming episodes. Definitely. And if you are finding value in this episode, please share it, give it a like, leave us a comment. And if you're listening in iTunes, please leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. It will help our podcast to be found, which will help us to help more people like you succeed in their business. So give us a review, give us a like, keep in touch, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.